everyone, Lee Packett here, and you're watching The Business of Law, the only web TV show focusing on the challenges and the opportunities facing the legal profession. Uh, I'm happy to say my guest today is David Perla. He's the president of Bloomberg Law. Last time he was on the show, however, he was the CEO of Matterhorn. Uh, good to have you back in studio. How are you doing? Great. Thanks, Lee. Great to be back. So you're about eight months into this new gig at Bloomberg. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? How are things going? Sure. It, fantastic. Bloomberg Law is part of Bloomberg BNA, so it's a combination of Bloomberg, mm -hmm. most of our, our viewers know, and uh, of BNA, which is a, a longtime 90-year-old uh, publisher of legal content, legal information, one of the foremost brands in uh, the publishing world in the legal industry. Bloomberg Law is our flagship product, and, and uh, I was hired, uh, it goes back about a year, I was recruited into the role. Really phenomenal, um, natural progression for me in bringing technology and analytics to bear into the legal profession. So an extension kind of of what I've been doing for the last 15 years of a 21-year of a career. Yeah. Now, full disclosure to some of my viewers who might not know, I spent about six years at Bloomberg Law before I left and started Mimesis, so we just missed each other. Um, David, I wanted to ask you, Bloomberg's entry into the legal space has taken a, a couple of iterations. It's been going on for about 10 years now, uh, even before the merger with BNA. Um, what is the next phase of the project um, look like from your view? What do you have in store? We're really looking at the market in practice areas and what we call verticals. So mm -hmm. what, what Bloomberg did originally was they took a data analytic approach to the, to the legal market, which is what they did with Bloomberg proper. Three years ago, Bloomberg acquired BNA, which was a massive content set, secondary content, you know, treatises and portfolios and um, news around the legal profession. So today it's really a robust offering. We're looking at the market in a slightly new way, which is we're, we're approaching both the law firm market and then the corporate and academic and, and, and court market vertically. And we're uh, building products and solutions that match the individual subject matters of practitioners. So corporate products, privacy and data security products, healthcare products, um, labor and employment products all tailored to the individual workflow of the practitioners in those particular subject matter areas. So we're taking a segmented approach, mm -hmm. and within that, we're bringing a few sensibilities to, to the product equation. One is the workflow. So the workflow of a transactional practitioner is very different than a, a litigator and still very different uh, than someone in the intellectual property or patent space. So we're accommodating that. And we're also bringing to bear all the technology and analytic chops that Bloomberg has historically brought to the table. So we saw a story last week that um, I've, I've been really interested in talking to you about today. Um, it deals with the response from big law to the cybersecurity threat. There was an article in the New York Times that essentially said they're going to take a page from how Wall Street dealt with these issues and essentially form a confederation um, that's going to pool resources in order to come up with a, um, a big ticket response to, to the, the issues that they're facing. Um, Let's, let's talk strategy for a moment. What is the best response to the risk that might be out there? Is this something that big law should be taking on themselves? Is this something that ultimately is going to get solved by a legal tech startup? Um, is some other player going to come in and be the most effective way to counter the threats that are out there? So big law, I think, is going to be, is going to be integral to the solution. The, the, the largest law firms and, and I think the most prestigious law firms are going to be a core part of the solution. They're going to mm -hmm. do it hand in glove with the government. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's at least two years since I sat with the managing partner of, of one of the most recognizable firms in the world. He had already been meeting with uh, a dozen plus of his colleagues and their chief information officers with the FBI on exactly this topic. So I do think it's going to be led by big law. Uh, I think it's not going to be a legal startup. I, I come from that world. Right, so, so that's I why I wanted that to ask world. you that question. Yeah, I, I, I think for a couple of reasons. I think number one, big law is not going to be comfortable with that solution. They're going to want an, uh, they're going to want someone they trust that they know, and the government. You know, a lot of what we're all reading about is that the, that the government is really trying to work hand in glove with all the different uh, commercial players. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you read about what happened with Sony, there's a, there's a sense that, that the cooperation there wasn't what it could have been. So the government's really staying very close to this. Because there are so many lawyers in government, it's actually the, the, um, the way they communicate works nicely with big law. But as a result of both big law's um, views on, on who they work with and the government, it's going to be a, a, an established player that they'll have to work with. Yeah. Maybe someone out of the cybersecurity world, maybe someone out of the technology world, maybe someone out of the data world. 
uh, clearly, you know, I think Bloomberg has has the has the trust of both um, big law and the government. But it's not to say we would do it merely that I think it's going to be a set of names working hand in glove with law firms and government. I don't think the law firms are going to try and do this with their own internal technology groups. Yeah, it, it's a fascinating conversation to have because you know. Media is nuts these days, and they get their hands on these cybersecurity issues and look at things like what happened with Sony a couple months back, and uh, they run wild with the story, as, as, as they tend to do. How do you assess um, the risk in real terms when it comes to big law firms? I mean, before this year happened and before we saw stuff like Sony and Anthem, I would think that big law was pretty good with cybersecurity issues. Yeah, so big law is, is okay with cybersecurity yeah. issues, with their own cybersecurity. <laughs> Um, their networks are, are largely secure networks. They're pretty good. The, the thing to remember about big law is they're fragmented. Mm -hmm. So your largest law firm in the world would be a small, quite small public company. So there's a, there's a simple resource issue. Yeah. Now, in fairness, they have fewer offices, but, but they are, um, they are vulnerable, vulnerable because of their size. Mm -hmm. um, they're also holding a lot of sensitive data. That data is, in traditional terms, business-to-business -business data. So they're not holding an awful lot of consumer data. This is not the type of breach you would think about, like an Anthem breach, where you're going to suddenly have Social Security information out there, or Target, where you're going to have credit card information out in the public. What's more of a risk, uh, two, two risks I think the law firms think about, and they can comment on this, but one is the reputational harm to great law firms is enormous from a breach. Right? Sure. They're, they're expected to keep information confidential. The privilege, attorney-client privilege, depends on taking measures to keep data confidential. So that's one risk. The second risk is risk when the data gets out that, that bad actors can act upon that data. They can trade on the in, inside information. They can, they can take particular actions based on what law firms are doing in representing their underlying clients. So I think those are the two. I don't see a particularly large consumer risk, mm -hmm. which is why you don't see newspapers writing about law firms being the next big threat, because there's not a consumer angle here. Not to name names here, but are you seeing firms out there today that um, get an A-plus on, on these issues? Yeah, I can't, I can't name, I mean, I can't speak about our, our clients or, or, or prospective clients. There are some firms that are really world class at it, that are, that are attentive to it, that um, take incredible measures to, to protect the security of their clients' data and their individual data. And there are some firms that, you know, that are less so. Um, interestingly, if you spend time in law firms the way I do, one of the, one of the things you'll notice about security and data is the physical protections that take place at a law firm actually appear relatively lax when you compare, this to, compare them to some other environments. You can walk in a law firm, the amount of paper lying around. So mm -hmm. I went to visit a law firm on the West Coast uh, earlier in the fall, and they, had, they actually had client files in boxes with the names of the client and the cases sitting on the floor of the conference oh, room. That's old school. It's old school, <laughs> but, but, it, but it, by the way, this is, a, this is a very large law firm. Yeah. Uh, that's a real risk, and they're not thinking about that. They're thinking about their servers, and they're, and they're thinking about their, um, their data centers. All of those things are risks, um, all the way down to um, the things that typical CIOs are thinking about. You know, bring your own device issues, and what happens when people are logging in through cloud-based email systems? Can they send client documents? You know, down to things like thumb drives. Most law firms are paying attention to this. Some are a lot better at it than others. Uh, David, just in the time we have remaining, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about legal tech. Did you make it to the show this year? Absolutely. So we did a segment with uh, Scott Greenfield where uh, you know he went around and kind of talked to people that were, that were there and presenting. Um, and at the end, he got the sense that almost that the irrational exuberance that tended to surround the show in previous years wasn't quite there this year. I thought that was a really interesting remark. Um, I was wondering if you had a similar take. The I do agree with that. I don't, I don't think there's any irrational exuberance. I think it's a good show. It, it serves two purposes. Uh, number one, if you're in the legal world, it's a place to connect and network. And it, it's, um, someone joked, it's a little bit like Davos, mm -hmm. uh, but less exclusive. You simply have to be there if you're in the legal world. And, yeah. and people go to it for that reason. Uh, those of us in New York City have the luxury of, of just being able to, you know, to walk over or, or take a train. <laughs> right. So you go over and, and you get your pass. Also, if you're introducing a new tool or technology, particularly in e-discovery or things like predictive analytics, um, it becomes a very important place that you need to be at 
to say you were there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much product people are selling there. It's definitely a branding opportunity for companies, but I think there are companies that cycle through. So it, it doesn't have the sense that you have to be there to get your product to market, but it is a good place to put out a new technology or put out a new tool. It's definitely e-discovery heavy. Cool. So in that way, it feels a little bit like, like yesterday's news. David, always a pleasure. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks. Great to be here. That's David Perla, president of Bloomberg Law. That's what we have for this week. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more of this stuff we're working on, be sure to go check us out at mimesiswebtv.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Thanks for watching.